This is the 2024 GMC Canyon Denali, and it sits at the very top of General Motors' mid-size truck lineup. It's also about $23,000 more than General Motors' entry-level mid-size truck, the Chevy Colorado work truck. So what has GM done to justify this vehicle's nearly $53,000 price tag? It starts under the hood, where you're going to find the engine that is only optional on some higher trim Chevy Colorados comes standard on the GMC Canyon. It's a 2.7-liter turbocharged four-cylinder that makes 310 horsepower and 400 30 pound-feet of torque. Those are really good specs for this size of vehicle. And while I said this is the top-of-the-line GM mid-size pickup truck, it's actually not the most expensive. The off-road oriented AT4X and AT4X AEV versions of the Canyon do go into the $60,000 range, but being the Denali, this one is going to be the most luxurious. And while outside that means adding many bright chrome elements, inside that means diamond stitched leather, open pore wood trim, and features like heated and cooled seats, a heated steering wheel, and a heads-up display. Here in the back, I'm not really feeling the Denali-ness of this truck as much, and that's mostly due to the fact that I'm pretty cramped back here. My knees are brushing up against this front passenger seat, which has been adjusted to where my driver's seat would normally be, and my feet don't have a whole lot of space, so my knees are also pretty high off this seat, and I'm sitting upright. It's just not a very roomy back seat. I did a seven hour road trip with four guys who are all over six feet in a Ford Maverick, which is a compact pickup truck. This is a midsize pickup truck, and that definitely had roomier back seats than this Canyon does. It's pretty cramped back here, but that's kind of par for the course in the body on frame midsize truck segment. You're going to get more rear seat leg room in something like a Honda Ridgeline because that is unibody. It's also just a little more utilitarian back here. Well, you do get to the diamond stitched leather and this armrest that folds down to reveal some cup holders. There's quite a bit of scratchy black plastic back here. Um, this center console looks particularly cheap, I would say. It's just black, black plastic. You do get USB-A and USB-C chargers. Now, my biggest qualm with the GMC Canyon Denali is the interior door handle. Not this lever, that's fine, but this, where you put your hand to pull the door closed. It's a scratchy black plastic on the inside, so it's not very inviting to touch, but the worst part is it creaks really bad. So every time you pull the door closed, you hear this creak. I really wish GMC had put a little more thought into this door handle as it is something you're touching all the time, especially in this Denali trim level, because that really lowers this car's luxury status and luxury feel when you are hearing this creak every time you get into this car, especially because compared to the, this vehicle's steering wheel, which feels very nice and smooth and luxurious, this just really lets the truck down. Driving the GMC Canyon Denali. Now I know that the first comments on this video are going to be about the fact that this vehicle is only available with a four cylinder, but let me reiterate the power output of this engine, 310 horsepower, 430 pound feet of torque. Those are really good figures, better than what you would get from a naturally aspirated six cylinder. And definitely on the road, this car does not feel like a slouch. It has the pickup that you would want. And that torque figure means it does have decent towing as well. And this is the way the industry is moving. The new Tacoma is also only available with four cylinders. But the most important part about driving this Canyon Denali is does it feel like a Denali? Does it feel like it's worth 50000 over $50,000? And for the most part, yes, it does. I love this new interior design that the Chevy Colorado and the GMC Canyon has. I think it looks really upscale. And they've really elevated it in the Denali trim level as well. I'm a huge fan of this steering wheel. I think it looks great and it feels great, which is really important because it's what you're touching all the time. I love the Denali logo spelled out on the steering wheel as well. The infotainment system is great. You have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which looks great up there. Uh, they were, there's a little knurling finishes on the climate controls and the audio control just to add that little luxury touch. 11-inch virtual instrument cluster, which looks really crisp and clear. Definitely high quality and luxurious. Also very crisp and clear heads-up display. I also love the diamond stitch um, on the seats and the open pore wood trim. Altogether, it just looks really upscale in here and definitely worthy of the Denali badge. However, there are a few touch points that don't really live up to that level, like I mentioned about the door handle, and just there's some scratchy black plastic throughout the cabin that I really wish they had covered in a nicer, softer material for the Denali level. Uh, it feels very work trucky, um, having it so readily accessible, especially on the door. I wish this had been a nicer, softer material. Um, and in the center console, when you're sitting in the back, all you can see from the center console is hard black plastic. And I think that does detract from this Denali standing. 
But like I said, on the whole, definitely feels like a Denali. There's just a few areas where they could have added a little bit nicer materials to elevate the cabin further. But putting my foot down here takes a second, but then it really rockets off the line. And this vehicle is definitely quick enough for a passing maneuvering. And you're really not gonna miss the performance of the V6. And this engine, it doesn't sound horrible. Horrible. It's 2.7 liters, so it's a lot bigger than most turbocharged four cylinders in today's market. And I think that helps it not feel as droney. It doesn't sound like a V6. It doesn't sound certainly like a V8, but it's definitely not the worst sounding four cylinder on the market. It isn't, it isn't horrible sounding. It doesn't sound like a lawnmower. And this has a regular automatic transmission, which certainly helps. And it's uh, pretty good at delivering power. Yeah, I don't have any qualms with this vehicle's engine. Yes, it's a four cylinder, but it delivers what you need out of a truck. In terms of other driving dynamics, this is a body on frame truck, so it's not going to be the most dynamic vehicle ever. You definitely get a little bit of this side to side motion when you go over bumps, as is to be expected in this type of vehicle. But on the whole, the ride is really good. I'm surprised and impressed by how uh, supple this ride is for a body on frame truck. It really does mute the road well, the suspension, um, and it doesn't feel like super aggressive like you can kind of come to expect in some trucks. It definitely feels like they have done a good job tuning this vehicle for the slight luxury lean that a GMC would have and in particular a Denali would have. So on the whole, great truck, love driving it, feels premium, especially for the segment and that's critical. For the mid-sized truck segment, this is definitely, I would say the most premium offering on the market. It just falls a little short of, I would say, the Denali brand with some of the materials and the build quality of the interior door handle. So that's the 2024 GMC Canyon Denali. It's a truck that brings luxury into a traditionally rugged segment, although it does miss that luxury mark in just a few areas, like all the scratchy black plastic and the interior door handles. But on the whole, you are not going to be disappointed with this new Canyon Denali. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.